What's up, guys? I'm EJ. We're joined by Kendall here. This is our Young Justice Premiere Week recap. Kendall, we were taken a little bit by surprise last week at DC Fandom when they announced that not only just Young Justice uh, was right around the corner, but that Young Justice's first two episodes were already out and on HBO Max while they were doing Fandom. So that was a quite a surprise to a lot of people. Um, surprised us because we, you know, last time we had a Young Justice season, we were doing recaps. We had planned to do a recap show for this season. <laughs> them throwing it out there the way they did wasn't necessarily the, the best. Look, man, it was a short week, EJ. Yeah. It's like like the NFL. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It ended up being a short <laughs> week, so so trying to get these out was going to be difficult. So we figured that uh, for the first three episodes of Young Justice, we do basically a premiere week recap of these episodes, particularly since they kind of line up within the same uh, story arc. And, boy, this has been a really in- interesting story arc, Kendall, with, uh, with Connor and McGann and, of course, uh, Gar going to uh, Mars. Which I, by the way, I love that uh, that kind of like ethnic the dialect, yeah, the dialect, dialect of, of of no, we call it Mars and they say Mars. But these episodes, yeah. um, inhospitable, needful, and volatile will be our first uh, recap. And um, I gotta say, they packed a big punch for these first few episodes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, I mean, the, the Martian dialect with you know John Jones and. Uh, you know the the Ashan and the the Vladan <laughs> and yeah it's, it's it's great but um yeah I mean no this has been a great uh three uh it's been a great three episodes first three episodes uh you know I think we've gotten what what seemed like when it initially you know started I thought oh so this is going to be a slower a slower paced um you know introduction them going you know, on a, some sort of, you know, wedding trip to, uh, to, to Mars to have a religious ceremony, you know, it made sense, but you know, it, it's, it seems like, like you said, very centered around those, those three characters. Yeah. It seemed, like, um, it was a very, it seemed like a very grounded way to start the season. I was surprised. Yes. Very it. grounded way to start the season. And, you know, it's, it's for a show that obviously, you know, encapsulates, so many different characters in DC universe was so singularly focused on, uh, two to three characters. So, um, it was interesting. Uh, it was an interesting choice, but, um, I was immediately roped in by just the, 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 the character dynamics, uh, between the different, uh, the different characters that we were introduced to, uh, on, on Mars, uh, the, the, the politics that were involved, um, you know, and the, the, the class, the classism and racism involved on Mars. I mean, it was a very interesting, very interesting, uh, you know, subplot that I did not expect. Uh, yeah. you know, we knew there was going to be a little bit of it just because they had already introduced that, you know, in season one and two. Um, but it, they went much deeper with it, uh, in this, in the, in these three episodes. So yeah, I mean, it was exciting. You're totally right, Kendall, and they really did an excellent job of kind of roping in so many kind of social issues and social talking uh, points within the politics of Mars, which is not necessarily all that far into what we know in the comics. You know, we know the issue with the white and the green Martians and, and the kind of racism that goes with that and the eventual enslavement that happens on Mars. And it's, it's why we have Martian Manhunter as a character, you know, <laughs> himself. Uh, a lot yeah. of race of green Martians die. Uh, through the genocide by the white Martians. So uh, it, it's very weird to see kind of how the dynamics are in, you know, uh, this earth right now where you have uh, your, your your kind of caste system with the red Martians as the top Martians, I guess. The royalty, the Mar- yeah. Yeah, the royalty, thank you. The green Martians as a majority and the white Martians becoming a, a, a minority. And uh, when you add the dynamics of McGann being in a mixed family, which was not something that really was... Um, alluded to at all in the earlier seasons. I thought that was an yeah. interesting decision to make because we all just assumed that, no, she was from a family of white Martians. But they actually kind of made the, the actual familial link between John and McGann make sense because uh, mm-hmm. John's sister is is uh, her mother, and that's a green Martian, but her father is a white Martian. And unlike maybe in America where if you have mixed-race kids they kind of look like a blend of both races, you know, you end up having kind of just a a flip a coin where the person is either a white Martian or rather the, um, uh, the Martian, either a white Martian or a green Martian. 
So that, it, it, ended up in, made, it made for the family dynamics when she arrives on Mars interesting because you got her, you know, her sister who's a green Martian who, you know, definitely isn't all that thrilled as much to, to see her, but is doing all she can to be hospitable. Um, and then you have, of course, the dynamics with the parents as well. It's uh, it's it's quite it's quite an interesting uh, exploration that we see there. What did you kind of make of um, kind of what they set up in terms of just going to do this religious ceremony, taking Gar with them? Gar kind of being you know a blood relative and his insertion uh, to it because he's obviously very distressed during a lot of this time. You know he's he's taken the outsiders continue to be a rising force in terms of their. Um, social media imprint in their uh, in their in their duties of doing good, and of course him being the leader of that team. But it seems like there's a lot more going on with him. He's having a lot of trouble uh, with the one the lack that the fact that you can't really hide your thoughts with the Martians. So he's kind of lashing out in some of these instances, and then he seems to be, as we know by season the episode the third episode, going through some of, of a mental health crisis during this. Yeah, yeah. I mean the the. There's an interesting thing with the fact that obviously, like you said, his his because his thoughts aren't getting hidden, you know, he seems right. to be on edge. He seems to be very aggressive, but you know that might just be how he is. But normally, he can he can he can keep his composure. He can know when to speak and when not. But <laughs> um, but those things, and they mentioned that early in the show, like early yeah. in the season, that you know you're gonna have to uh, you know. And I saw be, some fans that were that, yeah, and I saw some fans that were upset with like his portrayal this in these first few episodes of why he was so annoying i was like i'm like you don't like i don't know if they like that either went with their heads or they weren't understanding that like he can't filter his thoughts so right like, this is why he's he's showing up like this right. Superboy might be a little bit more uh used to it uh right. give he's he, his relationship with mcgann right exactly uh, and and obviously, McGann obviously is used to it as well. But and think about Gar's upbringing. I mean, you know, yes, he has, he's went through a lot of tragedy. But remember, also he was, uh, you know, he's been a Hollywood star. You know, so so you know, maybe there's some of that kind of egotism that goes with some of his yeah, reactions yeah. to some of these things as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the the the. The, the the fact that he's he's missing the the outsiders it makes sense. Uh, they don't really. They don't they don't hammer home the timeline, but it seems like it's been, you know, at least over a month since because obviously just like what we see now in in our world, like going to Mars isn't it doesn't you know it's not like going to the moon. Yeah, it's a much yeah, longer. They said, trip. they said this is a, this is a three month trip that they're doing. It's a three month round trip. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So this is a long time, even if those days may seem short. Yeah, and so that's a lot of time for him to be away. Um, I kind of wonder why he went <laughs> but that's a whole nother conversation is like well, we know I don't, him, him and him and the and princess pratita are not on the bestest of terms he kind of mentions that at some point that they maybe need some time and i and i, I kind of seem to think that again whatever mental health things he's going through may be affecting his relationships with his team and with uh his girl you know because you know i, I actually related a lot to when eventually gar kind of you know we learn about the you know the uh the legion and we'll get to them soon um, and, and we learn a Saturn girl who actually kind of breaks him from his, you know, kind of psychosis. But, um, but you know, we learned that a lot of his fear and anxiety is coming from this aspect of, of failure and feeling like he failed his mother, that he failed Rita, um, that he's failed Wally, and that, and, and that, you know, he was scared to lose any more people through what he thought was going to be his own failure. And him not being there with the outsiders was him feeling like it was a dereliction of duty and that he may lose them at some point. Uh, it, was, it was a very, you know, talking of having show displaying grief through that lens of failure or perceived failure was uh, really heartbreaking to me and um, to me very relatable. Yeah, that was interesting. I mean, I think we've seen um, what's so great about what the show does is they tie in, they tie in the history. Like, there are very few shows, even a show, there were pl even plenty of great, you know, comic book cartoons and animated series. You know, Batman the animated series was great. And, you know, I think about Avengers, Earth, Mighty's Hero, Spectacular Spider-Man. Those shows were great. But this show now create has created a universe yeah. where, like, everything matters and every little thing that's happened has an impact on the person's psyche 
going forward. So you have a situation where you may have someone like, um, you know, obviously you mentioned Beast Boy, you know, going through what he's gone through in the first season or yeah. even the second season. And now how does that affect him now? You and know, off camera, you know, because I mean, like yeah. I had to actually end up doing some research about some of the other things. Like I, I forgot that um, that he was he was taken in by Rita once his mom died and that Rita died with the Doom Patrol. You know, and we had that pretty trippy, trippy episode when he had the good, good goggles. And I rewatched that episode. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. He, he lost two kind of quote unquote step parents or at least one step parent, um, even beyond losing his mother, who was killed by Queen Bee, you know, um, and feeling like a lot of these were his fault. You know, it was, uh, again, it's, it's, it's very heartbreaking, but it, it kind of puts you, makes you understand, you know, why when any little thing was happening, he was so on edge with, you know, saving Superboy or, you know, or kind of keeping everybody safe. It was, it was very important. like, like, for example, like the Bruce Tim universe is, is great. It's the gold standard of yeah. creating a universe in, in, in comic book animation. But what happens in Batman the animated series isn't as closely tied in to like what's going to happen in you know Just League Unlimited, right? Exactly. Just League. You know, there are some callbacks. There are some little things. Amanda Waller, you know, yeah. or like Batman Beyond to Batman, maybe a closer thing, but it's not. It's not as close as one Young Justice. It's the same show, obviously, but there's so many time skips. It almost feels like three different series uh, <laughs> that they've had so far. So. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been it's it, this that that part of this of this uh of the show has always been great and it's it's on display in this in this early arc. What do you make of kind of the the, the central kind of uh, mystery that we're kind of following early in the season? So, one it centers around you know who killed this Red Martian King, which happened you know before we even begin these episodes. We're saying you know we learn that the Red Martian King, who was this reformer, this you know kind of progressive figure, was killed. <laughs> Uh, he was trying to kind of, you know, improve relations with Earth and improve relations with people. Now the Queen is there, and she's, you know, you know, we see some of her, you know, her right hand is, you know, a very regressive guy, and and uh, and then she's kind of reeling back some of these reforms. Then you also have, of course, John Jones going through that uh, the boom tube that was supposed to be created between, uh, you know, uh, for them and Earth, and him it blowing up, and then that kind of being a different. Uh, uh, Talk about an inc- crazy end episode one. Oh yeah, I mean, I thought John Jones was dead. Did you think he was dead? I thought he was dead. I thought they killed John Jones. I'm I like, thought. Wow, I, 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 I thought. I didn't think he was dead, but I thought that he was going to. I thought they were going to stretch that out a lot longer than they did. And I, honestly, I think they should have. Um, mm, okay. I think that that I think he should have been gone for like ten episodes, and then we it figure definitely out. It doesn't have the same effect when you put the episodes back to back. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because those first two episodes. It's not. Yeah. It's actually been a week. Yeah, so I, mean, so I feel like maybe if, if if you had a week go by and we're still, you know, we come in being like, yo, we don't know what happened to John. And then, like, you see, okay, he's there. Like, you know, you, go, you know I watched it, you know, again, like, it's three thirty seconds later, I learned that he, he was alive. Like, okay, we're all good now. Um, but then that, that kind of becomes his own mystery as to, like, you know, who set this up? Was it uh, her brother, Makam, um, who's now going yeah. by uh, a Malafalic? Well, <laughs> uh, which is... Uh... <laughs> Malafalic. Yeah, Malafa. Yeah, which, which, and it's which, funny because in my first introduction to Malafalak was in Just League Doom. Right. Uh, he's like he's a part of that group, and he's a, he's supposed to be Mar- Martian Manhunter's villain. And in the comics, he is John he's Jones's brother. brother. Yeah, he's John Jones's brother. And in this, they switched it up to make him Magan's brother. Right. And you know that that's an interesting twist that makes sense given what they're. The story they're telling with the classism and the and like you said the caste system, the caste system that that we have in in this uh and we in this we were, Martian race we were introduced to uh, Makam or Ma Falak Falak in um in the last season uh, when right we went when we met Forager you know when he was you know uh, in, yeah pretending to be Orion uh Orion I'm sorry Orion uh well, he was pretending to right. be Orion and they were trying to get the weapons from Apocalypse and we see that his relationship with Apocalypse is still pretty strong we see the sod uh up here and yes as, as, with this you know basically this this nuclear weapon that i wonder will actually set up that kind of what i talked about earlier that kind of genocide that happens on mars we know that happens in you know different many different other earths when we know this story that leads to the white martians being uh being you know the ruling race i kind of yeah. wonder if this was 
their way of kind of putting that there and saying they didn't never got to that point yet, but they, they could very well get there very soon. Um, right. So, so those seem to be, and then the third mystery being why is the Legion following? Why are they there? Yeah. Why, why are they there? You know, we <laughs> see, uh, so we see Saturn girl, Phantom girl and chameleon boy. And they, they keep kind of referencing, you know, we can't intervene, but we need to make sure something happens. But then we do see the intervene that from time to time. There's a point when McGann almost notices that you know that they're there because also someone is clearly trying to sabotage uh, this whole thing. Yeah. The person who was probably behind the explosion of the boom tube and uh, those you know rocks that came down on them when they were uh, when they were going through that uh, that river. That so it's so it's like three mysteries kind of rolled into one. We, I assume that they're all be somewhat kind of connected. What do you kind of uh, make of, of how that's been checking out in these episodes? Yeah, so it seems like the Legion, like some of those, I think some of those mysteries, obviously, on some level, are the Legion, the Legion in 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 disguise, the Legion, the Legion in secret. Like when, you know, they didn't know who 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 was the one that fixed up Gar, you know, right. you know, and they're trying to figure out is it a good person or is it a, or is right. it a bad person. You know, did they leave any sort of evil residue inside his brain, and they they, they couldn't detect any. You know, obviously we know, like you said, that that Saturn girl, yeah, um, who who helped him, uh, or early in the early in the season where you know in the first episode where there's a cloaked figure in the background and you're thinking it's a Martian, but then there's a legion a legion ring, yeah, you know, uh, they're clearly they've been paying attention, you know, so like you said, there's there's a mix, um, there's still some gray areas, some things. Uh, it it's 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 been an interesting season because there's a lot going on, you know, so there is one of those. It's one of those situations where we may have to actually go back and rewatch some of these episodes to catch little things now that you know what's yeah. going on. Um, you may have an even better understanding. Um, I look again. I, I I've loved. I've just loved the. It, it kind of reminds me of Planet of the Apes, where in Planet of the Apes you have um, this sort of you you have a you have this this class this class system where you've got. Uh, you know the the orangutans are supposed to be the the more uh intelligent race of 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 ape, and you've got you know the chimpanzees, which are kind of um you know you're more I don't know what you want to call it moderate you know in the middle or somewhere, and then you've got the gorillas who are like you know the muscle and but they're not you know as as intelligent as again the, maybe the orangutans are a little more aggressive you know and you've got this you've got the dynamics in between that. Um, and that's what this reminds me of where you've got, you know, and the names again, like the Garoon are supposed to be the green Martians right. and the Vladan are supposed to be the, the red Martians, red. uh, Ash and, and or the white, the Ash and or the, or the white, you know, for like Ash and blood, you know, yeah. the, the, you know, and obviously Garoon is green, but, um, that whole breakdown is, is, is interesting. And I, I think, and I like how great... in the season they keep, they keep having different reminders um, to, to remind people that, that th- while they're different colors, they're the same. There's not they're they're identically from the genetic level the same. That was hilarious. Was that Desad who came in and said Desaad, that? Uh, Desaad, yeah, Desad came in. Well, first like, of all, you, you, you know, you guys are the exact same, but you guys treat each other so differently. Yeah, <laughs> you want to talk about sending a, a message to uh, racists, you know, worldwide to come here and be like, basically the official. The official doctrine of apocalypse and the dark side is that racism is dumb, <laughs> yeah. that is stupid, and we don't understand it. However, if you if you want to spread spread violence and hatred, we will more than happy be able to help you. But to put basically put in perspective that the most evil being in this whole galaxy and universe thinks racism is dumb. Doesn't understand it, doesn't approve of it, thinks it doesn't make any sense. I thought well, yeah, pretty, I mean that a kind very, of very important statement. You know, obviously not to get too political, but it speaks to like, you know, it's what people kind of assume the relationship with like Vladimir Putin is compared to with like you know Donald Trump, for example. <laughs> right? Know? Yeah, yeah. Because Putin, I don't know if Putin really cares about Donald Trump's politics, but he's gonna he's gonna help feed it because right. he's like yeah, it's yeah. always chaos. Um. He doesn't. He doesn't agree with everything. He doesn't think. He probably thinks the politics is just as stupid. But he, he loves the he loves the chaos. So it's a very similar. It's a very similar relationship in that. I mean, again, it's very interesting. And you know, I think your theory about you know 
will Maal Faak be the you know the the catalyst, and will we see the 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 post you know genocide yeah. genocidal um, or the post genocide Mars or Mars? Yeah. And and remember, we we had a similar. What I love about this show is we had a very similar story last season because it became will uh will Terra turn? Yeah, and we, you think it's inevitable because yeah, you know every yeah. every time you hear the story, Terra turns on the Titans. Um, uh, but this is you know Earth sixteen. This is a different Earth, so you know th- things can be different. Things can change. So yeah, um, so he he does get this weapon that would give him license to essentially wipe out the green martians and leave the white martians basically to rule the rule the, the planet will he do it i don't know this malafak oh, i can never get his name right um <laughs> malafak malafak uh yeah. he, like Got he's <laughs> a, you know he's a different malafak than what we've seen in different yeah. Mar- you know dc canon so yeah it, 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 like having this having these little tweaks and these little wiggle this little wiggle room you know could you could end up doing a lot of different uh, interesting yeah. things um yeah they did, they did some real social commentary when it came to um when it came to magan's appearance identity. yeah you know and, and her identity you know that was that was some that was some deep stuff and um you know that, that spoke to a lot of different things as well yeah yeah definitely they definitely were very a lot of parallels to even though that was referring to race, there was a lot of parallels to the transgender identity community in, in terms of who you are and who you see yourself as. And again, this is why this show again can can really kind of reach out to a lot of people um, uh, because they tell these stories to these great. Yeah, I, I think they've done an excellent job of using again the politics of Mars, a place where you know these things are just e- they're easy. It's like these aren't. Do you mean these aren't great leaps that they're doing to kind of infuse social ideas? These are things that have or in the canon, you could just, you know, you, 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 it's up to you to just be as creative as you can to, uh, to, to do that. And, and then that's what we've, that's what we've seen. So we've talked about how good that this, this arc has been early on. Yeah. Um, are you a little bit concerned that it's going to run any longer or it's going to run too long? I should say, I mean, it's 26 um, episodes in the season. So you know, twenty six, twenty six is a good, it's a good number. I'm, yeah, you know, twenty six. So, so, so there's three. Yeah, because I, I know they said they're doing half, and they're doing a break, and then they come back with the, the second half. I think in the spring. I think the last episode ends, I guess, like December. I want to say something like that. Um, so or maybe January. So I think I'm not. I'm cool. Uh, I think I think that that you know the, I know last time when they when they did their first arc, the first arc was basically three episodes. The whole stuff in yes, Markovia. With Brion, yeah. Yeah. This has not been resolved. So we're still, you know, we're three episodes in and, and we're still kind of in Mars. And we by the way, we have not been introduced to really anyone else. Uh it, on the team, you know, besides, you know, very kind of like ancillary kind of moments, you know, you know, the moments where they leave and we kinda of see, you know, you know, we see, you know, uh uh, you know, uh you know, Ga- Gabrielle not Gabrielle, but you know, Violet and then they're yes. still living with them, and uh, and, and Harper, you know, Harper is now living with them as well. You know, Brion's obviously gone because of what happened uh, last time, but um, otherwise, then of course we see the little hit clip of the outsiders with uh, you know, a Beast Boy kind of looking at looking at old you know videos of them, so we know kind of who the team is and, and what they've been doing. But besides that, we don't know where Dick Grayson is. We haven't been introduced to what Aqualad or Aquaman now is doing. Um, yeah. All and they're in the they're in the title they're in the intro so yeah Zatanna is now also technically a main character yeah, on Rocket. Rocket so yeah. we don't know any we have we have not experienced any of them and that is a bold choice um to really decide because all these characters are very powerful especially obviously Dick and um and Calder but and of course uh, Artemis but to, to decide we're gonna really take the two members from the original team and just focus on them for three episodes. Uh, is is a bold move because we saw you know Superboy and and um and and, and McGann in those early three episodes even though a lot of the action was in Markovia with Artemis and Dick. Right. The one the other thing I will mention I one one thing on that is that I I I I wouldn't go for more than five episodes. It, you know if we get yeah, past five episodes on Mars I think that that might be excessive. 
Um, I tend to think that it will be wrapped up by the end of this next one. I kind of think so too. Um, yeah. I think it just makes sense. Uh, we're we seem to be reaching a crescendo. Um, and again, 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 at some point, you know, this the series is Young Justice. You know, it's not the 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 Magan and, <laughs> and Superboy show, but. Um, no, I mean, if they, if you ever need a pitch for a show, this they doing a bring you hell of a good pilot. If you were trying to do a battle pilot, I, I, I'm still, I'm still very much getting used to Greg Sipes as the voice of Beast Boy on this show. Uh, just because every time I hear him, it just sound he sounds so much like the, the same character in Teen Titans that, mm. um, you know, I'm still getting used to that fact. Uh, I I may have I may have gone in a different route just be, just because, but he's also the most and I mean, the only yeah, he, he is the voice, that we know. Though you can't go with anybody else. I think I get I feel you, but it's almost yeah. like when uh the times we've had Kevin Conroy, you know, be Batman's that weren't you know Bruce Tim content. It's like right. can you really go wrong though? You know, right. uh, I do. Don't you get a sense that this Beast Boy is just slightly different than the Beast Boy that we got in Teen Titans? That that's only that's the only reason why I say that. Oh I yeah, feel, yeah, he's very are, different. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's it, related to Magan, you know, Dupont, right? I guess in this, this it's, in this it's just story. different, way more. There's, there was some interesting stuff we didn't know as much about the Teen Titans Beast Boys backstory, besides you know, Doom Patrol stuff and a couple, a couple little things here and there. But uh, this obviously were way more. Yeah, we more, met him before he was Beast Boy. We know. Yeah, we have way more his detail. Childhood. We know he yeah. grew up in. So it just, um, yeah, it just seems like a more serious character. Um. Right. So I don't know, but Greg Sykes is doing a great job. It sounds like oh, he's yeah, I think you know, he's been fantastic. He's doing a great job. It just takes some getting used to, uh, yeah. given the given the show's uh, maturity. Do you think that the the Red Prince seems like just a, he he seems very shady. He seems like because obviously we got to figure out who's behind this stuff and 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 why and and he seems to be the character that keeps kind of popping up out of nowhere. He seems like a very nice guy. He's willing to help them with, uh, you know, uh, you know. I know McGann was making the canopy. What was uh, I don't I don't know what the, the the men were doing. They were doing the the altar, I guess. They had to build the altar. That was like part of the ritual. Um, you know, he offered. Oh, the yeah, they were in the lava, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and by the way, shout out to uh, we got to see the old uh, uh, green beetle, which was pretty cool. Yeah, that was um, interesting, right? Yeah, but uh, but. It's like I feel like they want you to think that he's behind some of these things that are happening. You know, we we clearly know that you know, uh, McGann's brother is like a red herring, but he almost seems to be like the more obvious red herring. So it's like, is it possible that someone that we haven't been introduced to that's behind this? Yo, oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's classic Scooby Doo logic. There's someone, right. there's someone involved here that there's been no hint of them being any sort of anything and again that's just like real life man you know yeah. <laughs> you know it, it, it's, it's always you know it's the people you don't expect <laughs> yeah um so that that'll be that'll be interesting to see um you know uh who's the yeah who's the, who's the one um, so i don't know i think there's gonna be there's gonna be people that we have to look at but um is it i mean is it the sister you know she's she's given some yeah She's had some blow ups and some things. I don't know if it, it's, it's ever. I don't know if they go that dark, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no. Sister, sister is also someone I thought about as well. Um, and do do you have any guess as to why the Legion is following them? I feel like it's something that's going to win way over my head. I feel like it's something is Superboy related. Interesting. I think that is something with Superboy where he. He like I think he ends up maybe being their leader. I mean, this right. is kind of like the first interactions with with him are through right. this. I think. I think I wouldn't be surprised if somehow like we see that you know, you no, know, when we when we're introduced to like who's leading them right now ends up being actually Superboy. A like, version maybe, of maybe Superboy, an right. older version of him exactly. That would they, be. I mean, and they make a, they make a little joke about him and like his aging too. Uh, in this in one of those episodes. Right, because you know, Sue Boy mentions how he's seen Megan grow up, and she's, you know, he's like, "Well, you haven't seen me. Like, I, I look the exact same, <laughs> basically, because yeah, yeah, he yeah. ages so, so, so slowly." Um, so yeah, so I, I, I kind of feel it. Like that's my like guess of what's going on. 
it's I, I, it seemed Beast Boy related only because that's who they were interacting with. But, but I don't right. think they went after him because he was the one that was like bugging out the most, and he was probably the one that was most likely to foil yes, whatever yeah. was supposed to happen because he was being so erratic. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting theory. Um, I'm just I'm just excited to see their inclusion in general. Obviously, uh, big fan of the cartoon uh, that they used to have back in the day with the young Superman. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean this. Is, I mean this season's off to a great start. Um, and and I also really liked the. I thought. I mean, it takes up. They took a very cute idea with the post credits or the roll credits rather, not even post credits. The roll credits being just you know Wolf sleeping. And yeah, like a moving picture. All different yeah. things. That was very cute and it worked every time. I think one time it was uh Spear. I think also was just the thing. Right. But I think they kind of elevate this idea where they've kind of added story exposition into you know the credits you know we see gabrielle uh, yeah gabrielle um violet uh you know kind of going over kind of you know some things that she's going with she kind of has like a, a you know a phone call kind of uh uh therapy session with dinah and she's talking about you know stuff with brion is still stuff tough for me to kind of overcome and then and i'm reviving my own life and you know gabrielle was big into you know being a muslim and religion i don't i don't know if that's where my path is um, and they, they, then they did, we're, we're able to do the cute stuff uh, with, you know, Superman in the last episode where he's talking, yeah. uh, you know, to but Lois these, about raising John, things, you know. Yeah, these little things. They, they these do learn details, things, though. Yeah, they, they, it's not like, it's not a Marvel, you know, end credits tag where it's going to, it's going to, you know, or like, like, that's what the Flash utilized. The Flash utilized these end credits tags that would, you know, lead you to the next episode or, you know be some massive reveal at the end of an episode. They're not doing that as much as they're using the credits now to, like you said, you know, almost like footnotes in the, in the yeah. middle of the episode. Um, and I think it's, I think it's an excellent concept. And I, I think that, like you said, we've learned things about the characters. We've, we've learned, and especially in this show where, again, where I say all these little details matter. Timeline is important for a show that, you know, jumps five years into the future. It seems like every, every, every yeah. episode, like you need to know where are we? Like, oh, John Kent is is a baby, you know. Right. Like Superman has a kid now. This this is important, you know. Mark that down on the on the notebook. Like these things, these these. So those conversations throughout the throughout the season, they may not be game changers, but there'll there'll be things that 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 matter. Yeah, and this is and we know this is a year removed from last year's stuff with uh with the end of last season, um. And then I also thought that, you know, the most important footnote probably in terms of these first three episodes with episode two, where, you know, uh, you know, Beast Boy is listening to his voicemail from uh, Perdita, who's talking about, you know, the, the difficulty they have in their relationship and, and how it's putting stress on her. And and that kind of leads directly into the third episode where he kind of has to kind of speak to some of these issues he's having with uh, with mental health. So. Um, and I thought I thought it was like again go, going back to that quick mental health thing. I thought that was a neat thing too for 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 McGann to be like you know the the, the brain blast that you received. We were be able to we were able to physically heal that, but these demons you're dealing with can only be healed through therapy and through talking and through counseling. And you know again a lot of people who deal with mental health crises and we talk about you know give me a pill and I'll be fine or give me this and I'll be fine. And I I know I I think that that. That was, I mean, they, and again, every all these things, again, they don't feel like they're just coming out of left field and they're just throwing in something just for the sake of having a message for this episode. Again, they do it in a very smooth, very kind of, uh, very thoughtful way. And they obviously blend very well with the actual story they're trying to tell, but then they also obviously tell a much larger story. Um, how do we want to do ratings for these episodes? Do, should, we, should we just do just the, all, the pack of three? You know, we'll we'll be doing the weekly episodes after, um, after obviously this review. review. But since uh, it may be weird to kind of review all three at once, um, maybe it's best to just do the the whole three. So, what are you gonna give these three episodes uh, out of ten for premiere week for Young Justice? Uh, these three episodes, um, as a whole, I would say seven point five. Uh, I think it's been it's been very good. Uh, I think the first episode might have been the highest. That might have been around eight point five. Um, the last, the, this third episode was a little bit more, it was a little more exposition, a little bit, a little slower, I think, but, um, overall though, I think it's been a good season. You know, I think it's been a very good season and I think, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where, 
um, where the season goes. Uh, and I'm, look, I mean, there's so many things that they teased last year. You know, Jason Todd. You know, yeah, well, <laughs> Damian Wayne. One, one, yeah, one of them promos. Jason Todd looks like he's fighting. Um, exactly, and so that that's yeah, so. that's the uh, thing that I'm most excited to see uh, this season. But we got to get past this Martian stuff first. Yeah, um, I, I I love this. I love this open to the season. I thought that this has been to me like just glued to these episodes. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, eight and a half. Um, I think that this was really great. They tied in a lot. I mean, I think, again, bringing in Apocalypse into this as well. Apocalypse kind of tends to loom large through almost every season, um, especially two through four. And seeing, you know, seeing them say, you know, Apocalypse is still here. And I think eventually it may not be this season, but maybe maybe season five is the one where we, we kind of really get Dark Side truly kind of in the fold here. Um, they, they kind of covered a lot of ground even while still being grounded to this very grounded story of just McGann and Connor trying to have a wedding. Um, they packed a lot in there with what's happening with the outsiders, what's happening with these people individually, some of the historical moments that have happened with these characters and how it's impacting them in these moments today. And they're big moments, you know, um, again, you know, uh, and, and her, ha- her mother having that moment about identity is super important to you know McGann's character and kind of, who we see her as, and we, we've seen her kind of take various different kind of, you know, um, appearances throughout the whole show and, and kind of get, you know, that kind of kind of finite kind of moment to kind of address it was great, you know, um, and address it, of course, the racism. And it's, I just, I've, I, again, I've just really enjoyed these episodes. Uh, I think that we're going to get a lot more expansive, more um, expansive kind of stuff involving the whole team very soon. But, the world building on Mars, I think, has been very useful, and we'll end up seeing if, if, uh, if you know, McGann's brother ends up being the catalyst for this uh, you know, Martian genocide, or if they decide to do something different. But I think that they've put themselves in a good position, um, either way, because you've, you know, we also talk about, you know, what we deal with with, uh, you know, the political activists and then extremism, and kind of what they've done with his character and kind of infusing that storyline and, and in that uh, you know theme that we deal with um here in you know america and just on earth period yeah i mean think about the i mean think about the scene where he's locked up and yeah you know they go over and he's talking to you know he's talking to him again like you know what do you what, like what is this like you know almost like you know why are you, I, why are you even yeah. messing with the groons like are you kidding yeah. me or why are you right. messing with the uh, the uh the blood end you know yeah. Or even like, the fact that like, why up. am I? Or the fact that why am I locked up? Like what right. char- on what charges am I being locked up? That was like, interesting. I was, wow. I was cl- I was cloaked in a place where there was a thing that happened. Like, yeah. You already know from yeah. forensic evidence that I didn't do it. So what am I? There even was some for? real. There was some real stuff there where it was and like, he, look. Yeah. It was like it was like come on, bro. Like look, man, <laughs> my alpha Ock, he's seeing some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we we gotta start listening to my alpha Ock. Yeah. So, so again, there's a, it's, 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 this show is very powerful. Um, it's a show that we enjoy dearly and, um, being able to do weekly reviews for it is something that we, we, we wanted to do last season. We did again, get uh, that off the ground. We're going to try to be committed this season and give you guys we- weekly recaps of young justice season four phantoms off to a really great start. Hope you guys enjoyed this recap. We'll be back next week with a new recap of young justice. That'll do it for now. For Kendall, I'm EJ. Take it easy, guys. Peace.